In this colour grading tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this beautiful autumnal wedding style colour grading effect to really bring out the reds, orange and yellows found in your photo just using Lightroom Classic. And I'm going to start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and choose a photo. Now what I recommend is choosing a photo shot in the autumn season. It doesn't have to be, but to get the best result out of it, I recommend firstly starting with some autumnal colours found within the trees and the foliage. Again, it doesn't, it's not an essential, but it's something I definitely recommend. The photo that we're using in this example was shot in late October, and in England there isn't much foliage left, so this work effect works really well by bringing out what colours are there and really emphasising them because that's the problem we just never seem to get a very good beautiful fall it may be beautiful for a couple weeks of the year but that's about it which is a little bit annoying which is why I really like this colour grading effect especially if the couple shot at autumn time to get those colours in the photo so let's go ahead and colour grade this photo so the first thing I recommend doing is going over to the right hand side making sure your develop panel is open and then making sure your basics panel is open as well now now, the first thing you want to change is in your profile here, at the moment it is Adobe Color. Because we're working on a portrait photo, what I recommend doing is going from Adobe Color and dropping down to Adobe Portrait. And also in treatment, making sure color is selected. Now when it comes to white balance, I always shoot in manual white balance and I recommend doing that for all photographers, start off shooting in manual white balance, either for photography or video. I find you get a lot more consistent colors when you're color grading for your gallery. But in this example, I'm actually gonna change it. I wanna make it a lot warmer. So I'm gonna go from 5700 Kelvin, which is what I was shooting at. I'm gonna go all the way up to 7500 Kelvin. Already that has made a decent change within the image, but there's still a lot more to do. Now in tint, I'm going to leave the same because I'm actually quite happy with the tint, but what I recommend doing, go into your eyedropper tool and selecting a part of the photo to get the exact white balance you want. Then I recommend warming it slightly to create this slightly warmer toned look. Then what you want to do is bring up the exposure. Now this photo is shot quite dark, so what I recommend doing is bring it all the way up and I'm going to bring it up to 0.8 of a stop. Now the reason it was dark is because I exposed it for the sky to make sure that I've got lots of important information found within the shadows. Then what I recommend doing is going to your contrast here and you want to increase the contrast but not by much. So we're going to go for a 20% increase there. Then because we've increased the brightness of the overall photo, we need to bring back that kind of brightness found within the highlights. So we can, what we can do is go to our highlights slider here and we want to bring that down. And what that will do is it'll bring back more of that information found especially in the sky but also the veil that's kind of sweeping in on the bottom of the photo. So what I recommend doing is going for around about minus 50, minus 60. In this example I'm going for minus 55. Then because the suit is quite dark and as well as the background what I recommend doing is going to the shadows here and increasing those like so. Kind of balancing the photo, not making it too bright, but also not making it too dark. So I'd go for a shadows here and I'll increase that by 40. Now with the whites and blacks to make sure we're not clipping any information, what I recommend doing is going to the whites here, increasing that by 10, and then going to the blacks here and decreasing that by 10. What this will do is it will prevent any matte kind of grayish look appearing. So we're getting true white and true black found within our photo. Then what we want to do is go to texture, clarity and dehaze. With texture, because we want to add a little bit more texture in, we're going to go for plus 10 there. Then with clarity, because we're working with skin tones, as you can see, what I recommend doing is going to clarity here and dropping that down by minus 10. All that'll do is that will soften the image, soften those skin tones a small amount, not massive change, but it will definitely impact the overall outcome. And then in dehaze here, because there's a little bit of haze found in the background, but not much, we're going to go to dehaze and we're going to increase that by 10. And the last thing that we're going to do in the basics panel is going to go to the vibrance here and we're going to simply increase that by 5. So a small change, but you'll see why we've done that later on in this tutorial. So what we're going to do is turn off the basics panel, we're going to skip out tone curve in this particular tutorial, and what we're going to do is drop down to HSL colour. Now HSL or hue, saturation and luminance controls the amount of colour, the type of colour, but also the brightness of that colour. It's a great way of colour grading and controlling the amount of colour found within your photo. So it's split into three bands, as you can see, hue is the type of colour, as you can see by the colour bands. 
Then we've got saturation, which is the amount of color, aka how saturated each color band is. And then luminance is the brightness of that color. So very dark or very bright. So let's go over to hue first. Skip out the reds because reds are predominantly found in the skin tones. We don't want to majorly adjust those. We're going to go to orange here. We're going to decrease those by minus five. Then what we're gonna do is go to the yellows here. We're gonna decrease those by minus 20. And for the biggest change, we're going to go to greens here and we're gonna minus those by 40. What that will do is it will bring out, basically remove most of the greens and bring more orangey yellow tones found within the grass, as well as shrubbery and forest and woodlands. Then what we're gonna do is go to the aquas here. We're going to decrease those by 10, and it's the same with the blues, so minus 10 there. And what that will do is it will bring out a little bit more this greeny look found within the kind of sky. Annoyingly, it was fairly overcast on the day, but there's a little bit in the top corner there, but it's not made a massive difference to my photo, but it will hopefully make a big difference to yours. Then we'll go to purple. What we're gonna do is increase those by plus 10. And then the last thing we we'll do is go to magenta here and increase that by plus 25. Okay, so that's with hue finished. What we're gonna do is go over to saturation. We're gonna make a few more changes. So we're gonna go to red here. We're gonna decrease those by 10 bringing out some of that vibrancy found predominantly within the skin tones. And it's the same with orange. So what we're gonna do is minus those by 10 as well. Then what we're gonna do is go to the yellows. We're gonna drop that down by minus 35. Again, take out some of that punch found within the foliage, AKA the grass, woodlands, and kind of, it's not much, as you can see, there's not much there, but it will kind of semi-reduce it, especially in the grass you can see. Then in the greens, we're gonna do the same. So minus 35. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the aquas alone. Not many aquas in this photo. And we don't really wanna change them even if they were there. We're gonna to go to the blue, which will affect the sky. We're gonna basically remove some of that, punch away from the sky by dropping it down by minus 10. And it's this, basically the same situation for purple and blue. So we're gonna go for minus 35 and minus 20. So now you can see why we've added in a little bit of vibrance because we're reducing so much of it in HSL. And the last thing we'll do is we're gonna to go to the luminance here. We're gonna make a few changes. We're gonna go to orange. What we're gonna do is we're gonna darken the oranges by minus 20. And it's the same with the greens. Again, quite bright. So what we're gonna do is go for minus 10 there. If you reduce saturation, but also luminosity, you'll bring back some of that saturation. They're kind of interlinked with each other. If you bring up the brightness and bring up the saturation, you won't. it won't look like you've changed much. But if you bring up one and darken the other, it makes a larger impact. Difficult to explain. If you'd like to learn more about how powerful the HSL color grading is, go ahead and watch my uh, masterclass tutorial you can find either in the link in the description or the top card you up here. So that's pretty much what we've done. We make two more changes, purple and magenta. We're gonna increase those plus 15. And the last one, plus 15, nice and easy. Okay, so let's turn off HSL. And what we're gonna do is go over to color grading. Now color grading, very similar to split toning, is a great way of adding in a specific hue to either the shadows, mid-tones or highlights. In this example, we're only gonna be doing two. We're gonna be doing the shadows and highlights. So inside the shadows here, we wanna warm those shadows up. So what we wanna do is drag those over, probably go for a number of 35, which you can see is more of an orangey, yellowy, reddish color found over here. And then what we're gonna do is go to the saturation slider and add that in. We're gonna go for, I'd probably go for around five. So a very small change, but definitely noticeable. Then what we're gonna do is go over to the highlights. This will predominantly affect the sky and also the veil you can see coming in, kind of sweeping in at the bottom. What we're gonna do is go for a slightly more yellowish look. So we're gonna go for a hue of 50, and then we're gonna increase it until you are happy. So I'm probably gonna go for a amount of plus 20 there. Now to blend that a little bit better, what we're gonna do is go to our blending options, your blending here, and go from 50, and we're gonna increase that all the way up to 75. What that will do is it will really blend those colors together and make it look a lot more seamless. Instead of having one color in the highlights, one color in the shadows, it blends it, making it a lot more consistent, and personally, a lot more natural. Okay, so turn off color grading. What we're gonna do is drop down to lens correction. Now I was shooting in uh, RAW, so make sure that your remove chromatic aberration is turned on as well as in no enable profile corrections. The reason for this, not all lenses are optically perfect, perfect straight out of the gate. So they need a little bit of software to fix them. In this example, I was shooting on a Sigma 35mm f1.4. And if I turn off profile corrections, you can see there's a little bit of distortion as well as a little bit of vignetting, but 
Turning it on basically fixes all of that automatically. If you do still have problems, go over to manual mode. You can fix your distortion. You can also fix defringing as well. But so this tutorial isn't two hours long, we're not gonna go into that in this specific case. So let's turn off a lens correction. Last thing I wanna do, or second to last thing I wanna do is go over to the effects here. Now I wanna add in a small amount of vignette because they're central within the frame. I really wanna emphasize them using luminosity. So what we can do is basically use a vignette to darken the surrounding, bringing more interest into the center of the frame, which is where the couple are. So what we're gonna do is darken that down, but we're not gonna darken it by much because we've got the veil and we've also got some uh, basically pure sky. We don't wanna make it too, too strong, like for example that, way too strong. So what we're gonna do is go for a very subtle look of literally just minus 10. If I do the before and after, so that's the before and that's the after, very subtle. But as you can see, it's more darkening the kind of foliage. Again, bringing a small amount of more interest into the center of the photo. And the last thing we'll do is we're gonna head over to calibration. Now inside calibration, what I recommend doing is literally just going to the saturation here. Recommend going for plus five going to the green primaries and just increasing the saturation by plus five. And the last thing we'll do is go to the saturation of the blues and increasing that by plus five. Now, if you'd like to learn any more about the calibration tool, very powerful. We're not going into it at all really in this video, but I've got my playlist here, my masterclass tutorial that will really go in depth of what's possible with the calibration tool. Now, really this is finished. There's only one more change I wanna do and it's more a personal preference and it's just a small masking change. So what I recommend doing is basically turning off of uh, your uh, main major effects, heading over to the masking panel. What I recommend doing is going to your new masks, go ahead and just simply selecting the sky. Now, as you can see, it's selected some of that veil there. So what I recommend doing is go to subtract, go to the brush tool, remove it from that veil. We don't necessarily want it affecting there. So we'll do just making sure it doesn't affect that a little bit of there. And then what I would probably do is I would go to my exposure, I'd darken that by a small amount, so probably 0 0.05, a very small amount there. And then, uh, no, 0 0.1, I think. And then what I do is go to the highlights, drop that down. But I'll, what I'm gonna do is I want more blue to be there or subtle blue. So I'd go to my color, increase the color of the temperature or darken it by minus 30. And then I'm also going to do the same. I'm gonna do minus 20 there. It's not a major change, but it's definitely noticeable in this photo. I just found it was a bit too washed out. So introducing some color makes it look a little bit less washed out. You can also increase the saturation as well if you wanted to, but to be honest with you, I don't really think, I may be increasing plus 20 in this example, but uh, but yeah. So what I can do is now show you the before and after. So what I can do is show you the before and then show you the after. And what we've done is we've all brought out those real nice warm tones, emphasize that kind of late autumnal look. If you had an autumnal photo, it would look a lot more extreme the look and it would look a lot more, I personally think, better. But because this was a more of a late October shot, I think it was like the 29th of October, it just, annoyingly, the colors just weren't there and I really wanted to emphasize them for the couple. So what I'm gonna do is show you side by side. You can really see how much more basically detail we've brought back in the shadows. But also if we look over to the color edge, you can see it was green, but now it's more of this lovely orange color. And even this kind of brown of all of the trees that have lost their leaves, we've brought that brown or emphasized that brown back within the photo. And you can see we've actually brought a little bit more tealy orange in the sky, which really complements those colors accordingly. So yeah, highly recommend this specific color of color grading if you really wanna bring out those beautiful autumnal tones. Here is the before and here is the after. Well, thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you guys found it helpful and informative. Now, if you'd like to learn any more about Lightroom Classic, I've got my Masterclass playlist series just here. Or if you're more interested in just learning about color grading, I've got my other playlist you can find just here. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>